All right, so we're coming up here on the tail end of the electronics part of our journey here. Uh, as you can see, I've got the I've got the uh, the buck converter that I hooked up here, supplying the power for our uh, our actuator here, our solenoid valve. And right now, I've just got it hooked up to this uh, button here. Let me see if I can. Yeah. So I push this. And we get some actuation. I'm sure you can hear that. It's a little bit of a loud boy. I might have to put some uh, sound isolation on that. So now, all I gotta do is instead of actuating this by push button, I want to actuate this by a sensor. As you can see, it maybe might not be super clear, but this push button isn't directly controlling the uh, the power circuit. It's actually an input to the microcontroller, and then the microcontroller is outputting a signal. To control the uh, the power unit here so we just want now this input to the microcontroller instead of it being a uh, push button pull up push button it's going to be a pull up uh, some kind of sensor so we look at the reservoir and I was thinking well I'm going to need some way of detecting the level of water in the uh, the reservoir here the the original reservoir the small boy and I figured, you know, there's there's level sensors on DigiKey. I'll get one of those bad boys. I'll have to submerse it. And uh, then it'll be good to go. But taking a closer look at this, we can see that it actually has a level sensor built into it right here. Yeah, this is obviously, this is a float. It's got a magnet inside there. Let me just, uh, let me grab, yeah, let me grab a magnet. I can show you if I put the magnet. Hmm, I need to switch my hands here. If I put uh, magnet here, don't make a liar. Yeah, there we go. And yeah, we can see he's sucking the boy, sucking our boy. So we got some magnetic sensor going on here. And if you know anything about you know electronics and stuff like that, you know that this is probably so inside the unit that this whole thing slides into. Uh, on this side here, there's going to be a sensor that detects the magnet. It's probably going to be a reed switch. So I figured, well, I'll get my own reed switch. I mean, there's a couple of ways. I could try to tap into the sensor circuit of the original unit and just, you know, piggyback off that signal. But that would mean probably drilling more holes into the thing and possibly me screwing up the circuitry somehow. I don't know. I don't really want to try it. So if I can get a solution that doesn't actually you know, impact the original unit, then I'm happy with that. So, got my own reed switch here. Put it on the end of a big, long cable, and this is going to run from inside the, uh, the humidifier up to my controller. And I can just put this bad boy here. Let me show you. Uh, like this. And then I say, I, I need one more hand here to film this because I can't obviously move the thing. But if I move this down, let me just move it down towards the, mm, somewhere around there. No, it's got to, it's got to actually swing up for us to work. Maybe if I switch it around. No. Okay. This is a little embarrassing. Um, apparently for the sensor to work, you actually need to hook it up to the circuit. Uh, this is news to me, right? But anyways, let me let me let me just do this quickly. All right, as you can see here, now the whole thing is hooked up. Uh, switch is normally this reed switch is normally open. When it when there's a magnetic field, it will close. That will pull this input pin up to five volts, and that will you know then the microcontroller will turn that into a pull down on the uh, on the buck converter. And Bob's your uncle. So, if I bring this reed switch close to the magnet, it should work. Let's try it out. Where's the, where, where am I looking here? Oh, there you go. Look at that. Beautiful. You can hear that? Let me, let me, let me put you on here. LED camera. Yeah. Okay. So, now all that, all it's a matter of is I got to find the, you know, a good place, a good place to put this so that it will actuate at the uh, at the times that I want. All I'm going to do is tape, I'm going to 
you know, put some scotch tape. It's not going to be the final solution, but basically scotch tape this to a decent position. So we've got, no, we're out of focus here. Focus, you madman. There you go. Scotch tape this to a decent position. And uh, then I'm going to play around a little bit. I'm going to actually hook up the water and everything, and I'm going to just give it a little bit of a test run. So we'll see you soon with that. There you can see I have uh, I have affixed the uh, the reed switch with some industrial grade adhesive film, also known as uh, scotch tape, and uh, it's good. Look, check this out. Check this out. Now I can I can hold the camera in one hand and actuate the float level. On the other hand, you can actually watch. See? Down, up, down. Up, down, okay. All right, enough of that. So, um, next step, I guess, is gonna be messing around a little bit in C, making a very, very simple test program to run this with, and then I'm gonna hook up the, the wet works, and uh, we'll, we'll see what we see. So, a lot of thread tape and blood and tears later, I finally have, uh, I only have all the, the piping hooked up together. Hopefully this doesn't leak. We're going to do a little leak test on it. We're going to fill up this reservoir in here. We're going to make sure it doesn't leak. And if that works, then we'll actually try to actuate the valve and uh, see what kind of flow we're getting from this bad boy. All right, so as you can see, we're all, we're all filled up here. Uh, and so far, no leaks. Looking pretty dry. I spilled a little bit, but I wiped that all up, and uh, yeah, we're looking good. So, next thing, we're going to put this hose onto this nipple here. We're going to clamp it down, and uh, then we're going to test actuating the actual valve. Small little problem here. This clamp isn't really big enough to uh, to attach here. It's It's maxed beyond its uh, final notch. So it's not actually clamping at all, really. I don't know if you can see this here, but yeah, it's uh, it's it's not it's not connected there. So eh, it should be fine just with the tension on here. We don't want to run it like this all the time. No, we'll have to get a new clamp at some point. But for the test, it'll probably be fine. We'll see. So I got my hose just running into this bucket here because I'm not sure what kind of. Uh, you know what kind of flow we're gonna get. I don't want to run it into this and have it just you know spray all over the floor. Uh, so we'll run this one in here. I gotta I gotta hook this up. Gotta cross some fingers and I'll be back. Okay, we're ready to go here. Everything's hooked up. Lines going into here. Uh, let's see what uh, what we get of this height differential. I think the final will be a little more of a height differential, so we'll get a little more flow, but. Uh, Let's see what kind of flow we get here. Oh, ready? Go! Oh, it's coming out. It's not, uh, we're not getting like a huge amount of water coming out here. But, it's certainly enough that it won't take a very long time for it to fill up the, uh, the small reservoir from the big one here. And yeah, we get, we get a pretty decent, uh, I can, I can see the, uh, the level going down on the large reservoir here. So yeah, we get a decent flow. Stop it. And well, that's interesting. Um, the loud noise that it made when deactuating doesn't make that noise when it's got water in it. That's neat. A little bit less noise, never hurt anyone, but yeah. So, this is working quite well. Now, let's see, let's see if I get my floor wet here. So, the way that this will run in, essentially it's going to run in like this. You can't see it, yeah. So the hose is going to be coming in from this side. I'm going to have to put a hole in this plastic here. I don't know if you can see this plastic around here. I have to put a hole, semicircular hole. Hose will feed in through there. It'll come in like this. But if there's too much flow, the water is just going to, you know, go over the edge there. It's going to go over this edge here. Uh, we don't want that. So... We might have to put in some kind of a some kind of a check 
or something on the end of the hose that uh, prevents the flow from you know jet streaming off the end here but let's just do a little quick test probably gonna get my floor wet here that's fine um, but I can't do the test while I'm holding the phone so I'll be back okay yeah I got my floor wet here a little dirty too wet and dirty uh, so yeah obviously the flow that's coming out of this hose is way too much um, changing the direction putting like some kind of a check in front of it might help but there's another issue and that is will the flow coming out of the hose overwhelm this hole here and if so then what are we going to do about it we could enlarge the hole uh, that would involve you know more damage to the original unit which I don't, I don't I like to avoid if possible the other thing we could do is do something to reduce the flow out of the hose here uh, I'm really I'm for a number of reasons I'm definitely regretting the the size of the the hose nipple I got here. If I would have gotten a smaller hose nipple, I would have been able to use a smaller hose here, which means smaller hole has to be drilled into here, less flow, which is actually what I want. And I'd also be able to actually use this freaking clamp. So for many reasons, the selection of this hose nipple here was, uh, uh, mistakes were made, let's just put it that way. Mistakes were made. Alright, so I ran another test where I basically, yeah, let me see here, let me show you, I held the hose pointed directly down onto the plastic surface here, and it still overwhelmed this catch basin, and it was overflowing, I don't know if you can see here, but this is, this is new spill from my second test. So, basically, I've got too much flow. Um, I mean, I could buy a different hose, it's not, hose isn't that expensive. I could also, so I could get a smaller hose nipple, which would allow me to use a smaller hose, it would also allow me to use this clamp that I bought. Um, but that's annoying. Don't know if I really want to do that. I have to think about it. But uh, either way, the other the other way, I, the other way I could handle this, use the same hose, um, put a hole in here for the hose to actually go into the yeah, the reservoir itself instead of the hose draining into this basin, this catch basin. Uh, so I mean that uh, would be okay I guess. I don't really want to drill another hole into here if I don't have to, but I don't know. I'll, have to, I'll have to think this one out. Do I want to buy a new couple new parts? More legwork? Or do I want to deface my thing a little more here? We'll see. Alright, we're doing this. Uh, I have decided, I've often been told both my nipples and my hose are just too big, so we're gonna uh, we're gonna get a little smaller hose, smaller nipple. We're gonna do this right. <laughs> 